This program is presented by Birch Gold Group, the precious metal IRA specialists. Good morning. Our top stories, another deadly shooting in California. This time, seven people are dead and one wounded. We bring you what's known so far about the killings. A former FBI official arrested and indicted for ties to Russia. He played a lead role in investigating the now discredited collusion between former President Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and the Russian government. The Federal Aviation Authority has lowered a heart health parameter for pilots. The move raises fear among some for passenger safety and pilot health. House Democrats nominate Representatives Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell back to the House Intelligence Committee, throwing the ball back to the House Speaker's Court. Will McCarthy follow through on his promise to remove them? We have a story of a father who reached a low point in his life, but he took a turn and made it into something that could help others. Good morning. Welcome to NTD. I'm Kevin Hogan. Unfortunately, we have some tough news to break right now. Another shooting in California yesterday. Seven people are dead. One was injured. The attacks took place in Half Moon Bay at two locations. They are farming facilities about a mile apart. One was a mushroom farm, the other a trucking company. Police took the suspect into custody. He drove to a police parking lot after the attacks. Police drew their guns when he found him and ordered him out of his car. He was thrown to the ground and arrested. Authorities identified the suspect as 67-year-old Chun Li Zhao. A gun was found in his car. Officials believe Zhao is a worker at one of the facilities. They say the victims were likely workers as well. Half Moon Bay is about 30 miles south of San Francisco. A motive is not yet known. And an update on the Monterey Park shooting. An 11th person has died from injuries. They passed away in the hospital yesterday. Investigators are still searching for a motive. 42 bullet casings were collected from the scene. Police officers searched the suspect's home. That was in a gated senior community in the town of Hemet. Here's the Los Angeles County Sheriff on what they found. We recovered one 308 caliber rifle, numerous electronic devices such as cell phones, computers, etc. Items that lead us to believe the suspect was manufacturing homemade firearm suppressors, and there are hundreds of rounds. We don't know exactly how many there were, a lot of loose ammunition. There's information out there. Uh, that the suspect may have committed uh, these crimes, and I'm paraphrasing, due to jealousy or some relationship issues. Uh, we're hearing those things too, but have not confirmed any of that information. It's part of what our investigators are diligently looking into. Surveillance footage of the shooter has been released. You can see him holding a gun with some kind of silencer on it. Hemet police released a statement yesterday. They say the suspect came into the department twice in early January. He was making claims of past fraud, theft, and poisoning allegations involving his family, dating back 10 to 20 years. Police say he told them he would come back with documentation about his claims, but never did. The Los Angeles County Sheriff says the handgun recovered from the suspect's van was registered to the suspect. He also said the suspect had a limited past criminal history that included an arrest for unlawful possession of a firearm back in 1990. A former high-level FBI official was charged in two separate indictments yesterday. Charles McGonigal was head of counterintelligence for the FBI's New York field office. He played a lead role in investigating now-discredited allegations of collusion between former President Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and the Russian government. He's now accused of violating U.S. sanctions, conspiracy, and money laundering. It's alleged he was working with a Russian oligarch after his retirement. He pleaded not guilty through his attorney. McGonagall is accused of being concealing hundreds of thousands of dollars while working for the FBI. That's in a separate case out of Washington. It's alleged he took money from a former employee of an Albanian intelligence agency. Prosecutors say he was required to disclose overseas travel and contacts with foreign nationals. An initial court appearance on those charges is set for Wednesday. Here's what McGonagall's lawyer had to say yesterday. We haven't 
seen any evidence yet. Um, Mr. McGonagall has had a long day. Uh, glad he was released. We expected him to be released. He's entered a plea of not guilty. The government said they're going to turn over discovery um, in the next few weeks, which we look forward to reviewing. You know, Charlie, as you all know, Charlie's had a long, distinguished career with the FBI. He's served in the United States for decades. We'll review the evidence, we'll closely scrutinize it, and uh, we have a lot of confidence in Mr. McGonagall. The Justice Department says McGonagall tried to have sanctions on Oleg Deripaska lifted. The U.S. imposed sanctions on the Russian billionaire in 2018. That was for acting on behalf of a senior official in the Russian government and for operating in the Russian energy sector. Trump responded to news of the indictment on Truth Social. He said the FBI guy after me for the Russia hoax was just arrested for taking money from Russia. Now to Washington, D.C. Democrat leadership has nominated high-profile representatives Eric Swalwell and Adam Schiff to serve again on the House Intel Committee, pressing Speaker McCarthy to follow through on his vow to reject them. The Speaker, meanwhile, defends seating certain Republican members like George Santos, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Paul Gosar on other committees. Entity's Melina Wisecup reports. The stage is officially set for a showdown over committee assignments on Capitol Hill. Democrat leader Hakeem Jeffries has officially nominated ranking member Adam Schiff and Representative Eric Swalwell to the Intel Committee. Both of these Democrats McCarthy has long vowed to remove from the Intel Committee. Both of them were uh, played key, key leadership roles during the Trump impeachment trials. And uh, Speaker McCarthy says the reason why he wants to remove Schiff from the Intel Committee is because he accuses Schiff of lying to the American people during those impeachment trials. Now, as for Swalwell, here's McCarthy. If you got the briefing I got from the FBI, you wouldn't have Swalwell on any committee. And you're going to tell me other Democrats couldn't fill that slot? He cannot get a security clearance in the private sector. So would you like to give him a government clearance? These two Democrats can be directly rejected by House Speaker McCarthy because of the nature of the Intel Committee. But another Democrat, Representative Ilhan Omar, whom McCarthy is trying to remove from the Foreign Affairs Committee, that removal will take a full floor vote. Some Democrats have said this is an act of revenge from McCarthy as a response to Democrats' removal of Representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar from committees during last Congress. Democrat leader Jeffries points out in his letter to McCarthy that removing those two Republican members was bipartisan, with 11 Republicans backing Greene's removal and just two backing Gosar's. These two members have been reinstated to their committees, some questioning the GOP's appointments. In addition, Republicans are being scrutinized for allowing George Santos to sit on committees. Democrat leader Jeffries calling him a serial fraudster and telling McCarthy that the appointment of Santos, while denying certain Democrat seats, is a double standard. Santos will remain on his committees while legal proceedings play out. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NTD News. Concerns and controversy are swirling around a decision by the Federal Aviation Authority, or FAA. They changed the heart test limit for pilots late last year without official announcement. Entity's Daniel Monahan has more. The FAA's change involves the PR interval. The PR interval represents the time it takes for an electrical impulse to travel from one part of the heart to another. It is an indicator of heart health. Pilots with PR intervals longer than 200 milliseconds used to require further evaluation. After the change, that now happens when the pilot's PR readings go beyond 300 milliseconds. Cardiologist Thomas Levy referred to a 30-year Harvard study from 2009. The study reports that those with a PR level just above 200 milliseconds had twice the chance of atrial fibrillation, had three times the chance of having a bad enough arrhythmia or heart block to require a pacemaker insertion, and a 50% chance increase of death from all causes. Critics fear that expanding the limit could endanger pilots' health and passenger safety, especially with rising reports of cardiac arrest and sudden death since the COVID pandemic began in 2020. Myocarditis pre-pandemic and myocarditis post-pandemic are two completely different diseases. Some researchers suggest that certain heart conditions could be tied to after-effects of COVID-19 injections or the virus. 
Pilot Robert Snow believes his cardiac arrest is connected to the vaccine he was forced to take. This despite already having natural immunity from previously contracting the virus. Mandatory, no questions asked, get the shot or you're fired. On the new EKG standard, the FAA said, when making changes to medical requirements and guidance, the FAA follows standard processes based on data and science. Dr. Peter Chambers says changing the PR interval limit removes the safety zone that enables catching a problem early. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis doubled down yesterday on the state's rejection of a black history course. Meanwhile, Missouri's Attorney General sounds off about a diversity event. Entity's Daniel Monahan has the story. In the state of Florida, our education standards not only don't prevent, but they require teaching black history. DeSantis says the problem is with a specific advanced placement course. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? The governor says Florida education guidelines require that schools provide education, not what he calls indoctrination. When you try to use black history to shoehorn in queer theory, uh, you are clearly trying to use that uh, for political purposes. Florida House Democratic leader Fentrice Driscoll called the administration's rejection of the course cowardly. She says that people would be boring and closed-minded if they only encountered ideas they agreed with. Meanwhile, Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey reacted to Missouri school kids attending an event that included drag queens. He called for the resignation or termination of school officials who knew that they would, quote, be subjecting children to an adult-themed drag show without parental consent. Here's Bailey on Missouri radio station 93.9 KSSZ-FM. This is shameful behavior. This is nothing short of deplorable. Thank you for holding them accountable. Don't let them hide behind the shroud, the cloak, the deception of of quote unquote diversity. The Columbia Diversity Celebration included three drag queens who performed for students. Bailey says the issue is about protecting children. Mayor Barbara Buffalo, however, defended the event. She says the event reaffirms that Columbia is a community that supports all. Bailey disagrees. He says transporting students to a drag show likely violates state law. He's referring to new legislation that criminalizes providing certain sexual material to a student. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. And coming up next, Chase Bank in New York is closing some of its ATMs early. That's due to rising crime in the city. And some residents in an upscale Arizona neighborhood are using their swimming pools as water tanks. Find out more about the mega drought and the fight for water in Maricopa County after the break. This is Stephen K. Bannon. I urge you to protect your savings from inflation by diversifying into a physical gold IRA from Birch Gold Group. Simply text the word NTD to 989898 and you'll get a free info kit on gold IRAs explaining everything. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Good to have you back with us. Some New Yorkers trying to get access to their money 24-7 won't have that luxury anymore. Chase Bank announced Monday it will no longer offer 24-hour service at some of its ATMs in New York City. The bank cited rising crime and vagrancy behind its decision. Chase has several hundred branches in the city. A spokesperson said only a small number of machines will no longer offer the 24-hour service. Instead, those machines will shut down earlier in the evening. 
Mayor Eric Adams was not happy with the decision and said more needs to be done to make people feel safe in the city. Crime in New York was up 23.5% last year, though shootings and murders fell in 2022. Residents in the Arizona subdivision of Rio Verde foothills are scrambling to conserve water and find alternative sources. That's after the city of Scottsdale cut off water supplies to residents outside city limits. Once used as a refuge from the hot Arizona sun, Aaron Peterson's backyard pool in Rio Verde foothills now serves as a backup water supply. It holds 8,500 gallons and I decided not to empty it so I could have extra water to flush the toilet if I need to. Residents in this upscale desert neighborhood are now skipping showers and turning off the tap in a desperate scramble to conserve water as they find themselves cut off from the main source of their supply. We use between four and 5,000 gallons a month of, of water. And we have a GPS meter on our tank that reminds us that it's getting low. The urgent shortage comes as the neighboring city of Scottsdale said it will no longer sell to commercial haulers who would fill up in the city and then deliver the much needed water to residents in neighboring Rio Verde foothills, an unincorporated area that has no water supply of its own. Peterson says he was blindsided. We moved out here in 2018 and we had no information on a water problem when we moved into this area. Scottsdale said it warned about the cuts back in 2015 and that it needs to save water for its own residents after years of severe drought have cut its own water supply from the Colorado River. The move has forced haulers to drive much farther to collect water from other sources, resulting in steep price increases for the people of Rio Verde foothills who don't have their own wells. But Sarah Porter, the director of the Kyle Center for Water Policy at Arizona State University, says Scottsdale shouldn't take all the blame. The city of Scottsdale doesn't have control over the growth in Rio Verde. It doesn't have much control over water demand in Rio Verde. And so the, the, the people coming to take water from Scottsdale through this water hauling um, process are for the city of Scottsdale kind of like a leak kind of like a leak in the water system, that water is leaking out to Rio Verde when the city of Scottsdale needs to take steps to make sure that if there are additional cuts in Colorado River supplies, the city will have enough water to deliver to the people who are there now. Porter says the real problem lies in the way Rio Verde foothills was developed. We do have really strong water supply rules in the state. And one of the most important rules is that no new subdivision, no new housing development of six or more homes can be built unless the developer shows that there's a hundred year supply of water to serve that home. But developers were able to skirt those restrictions on a technicality by building subdivisions with four or five houses instead of six, so no dedicated water source was required. Now, residents of the suburb are suing Scottsdale to restore access to city water. City officials declined a request for an interview due to pending litigation, but a statement on its website noted that Rio Verde Foothills is governed by Maricopa County, not Scottsdale, whose residents fund their own water infrastructure. Adding, quote, the county and the state hold ultimate responsibility and authority over areas with unfettered growth that have limited to no long-term access to water. The Food and Drug Administration has cleared a new technology for use in stroke rehabilitation. A wearable exoskeleton gives people with disabilities more mobility. Let's take a look. As soon as Oscar Constanza gives the order, a large frame strapped to his body lifts him up. And he starts walking. Uh, new for me because, uh... It's new for me because previously I've always needed assistance to walk, and now I no longer need assistance, so I feel independent. 16-year-old Constanza has a genetic neurological condition. That means his nerves don't send enough signals to his legs. This exoskeleton, an outer frame that supports and stimulates body movement, is now giving him some degree of independence. One of the engineering minds behind this invention is Constanza's own father, 
Jean Louis, who co-founded the company Wondercraft. There's three of us who are the founders of Wondercraft, which was founded in 2012. Two of the founders, including myself, have loved ones in our family in wheelchairs. For me, it's my son Oscar, and one day he said to me, Dad, you're a robotics engineer. Why don't you make a robot that will help me to walk? Other companies across the world are also manufacturing exoskeletons, competing to make them as light as possible. Some are focused on helping people with disability to walk, others on a series of applications, like making standing less tiring for factory workers. For Jean-Louis, the purpose of his product is simple. We're doing all this work because we're sure that in 10 years, there will no longer be, or much fewer, wheelchairs. Wheelchairs are an anomaly. Men, women, human beings are meant to be upright. Wondercraft's exoskeleton has been sold to dozens of hospitals in France, Luxembourg, and the U.S. The company said it's not ready for individuals' everyday use because right now the exoskeleton is too heavy. And in other news, police in Thailand confiscated over one ton of crystal meth in early January from three separate cases. They said today that the drugs were headed for other countries. The one and a quarter tons of crystal meth were mostly being smuggled inside tea and coffee packages hidden in secret compartments of vehicles. They were being transported from the north and northeastern region. The drugs were heading southward to the border areas. Police didn't reveal the market value of the intercepted drugs, but mentioned that Taiwan is the frequent destination. Police said that advanced technology has been used in mass production of the illicit drugs. They said they will be tightening measures to prevent drugs from slipping through various trafficking channels. And just ahead, a New Jersey man reached a low point in his life, but he found a way to turn the situation into something good. He began serving his community by helping local seniors. And a unique British motorsport holds its finals in the UK. We take a look how the competition is played after the break. NTD's Capital Report. It's about getting answers. Cutting through the fog of politics. It's about your questions and our chances to ask. What is the net impact of the American cars? We're great. Thank you for joining us. We're speaking to those in power to find out what does this mean for the people. We're here so you are in the know. The Fixture Pioneer, CGN. Professional AI intelligent fixtures. All-round integration of four systems. High precision, high durability, high quality. Two micrometer repetition accuracy. More than 80 patent certificates. ISO 9001 approved. Precision clamping to meet your every need. CGM has it all. Pride of Taiwan, CGM. Welcome back. Our next story is a wonderful example of someone who faced a difficult time, but then turned it into something good. And today's Dave Martin has the story. During the pandemic, Brian Schwartz lost his advertising job. But just when the world seemed out of hope, Schwartz carved a path forward. My name is Brian, and I want to mow your lawn. He started offering to mow the lawns of people in his neighborhood. I found it to be a form of therapy mowing my own lawn and I wanted to do something good in the world um, and so I just reached out to you know elderly neighbors. It was a boost for the whole community. Because we're not only helping the people, not, we're not only helping people directly and in their lawns, it's making the neighbors happy as well. The service is now an established non-profit organization and is still entirely free. Occasionally we'll uh, get people that want to offer tips. Uh, generally, I just say no thank you and move on to the next lawn. Um, it's just our way of saying thank you and uh, paying it forward. As demand for the service grew, so did the volunteer workforce. Now over 300 volunteers across 42 states have joined Schwartz in his mission. In total, they've cleaned up over a thousand yards for those who can't afford lawn services. The, the kinds of uh, volunteers that are generally 18 years and older are busy working professionals, 
uh, some that are just recently retired, and most of them happen to have their own landscaping equipment. The hashtag Momentum, along with media coverage, grew the service to be six times its original size. An evergreen opportunity for us to just continue spreading kindness. I mean, the grass will always be there. Schwartz started the nonprofit at a low point in his life. The pandemic hit, he lost his job, his wife was pregnant, and his father was battling brain cancer. But even at a time like this, he thought of helping others. Schwartz spoke of a letter he received from a woman who read about his lawn service. Be the reason someone believed in the goodness of people. After getting such positive feedback, Schwartz says he's realized he's onto something much bigger than just himself. He now continues his nonprofit business alongside his new online advertising job. Dave Martin, NTD News. In Florida, an experienced diver was caught in a current that swept him away from his boat. He managed to stay afloat for hours until his family members found him. Let's take a look at this miraculous rescue. The video shows the family jumping for joy after spotting Dylan Gartenmayer floating alive. The 21-year-old began diving when he was just 11. Family members say that experience helped him survive a frightening ordeal. Dylan was free diving near a reef in Key West. A strong current pulled him away, leaving his boat and fellow divers behind. His friends started searching for him and eventually called the Coast Guard for help. He found a bamboo stick and used it to keep himself afloat. He then swam two miles to get back to the reef. Eventually, family members spotted Dylan and brought him back to shore. Coast Guard members determined Dylan's body temperature was low, and once that was stabilized, he was free to go. Few motorsports are as unique as the British sporting trials. The British motorsport concluded its season last weekend in Stroud. Here's a look at how the competition goes. Unlike most motorsports, sporting trials are not about driving the fastest or most high-tech cars around a track. Instead, opponents compete to clear sections marked out with 12 flagpoles, just like a mini golf course. The aim is to reach as many flags as you can in a section without stopping. For every flag not cleared, the driver is charged a point, so the driver with the lowest collected score at the end wins. This year's Gold Star Final was won for the first time by Thomas Bricknell of Cornwall and his passenger Lester Smith. They finished 18 points below their nearest competition. That's all for today's program. We'd love to hear from you. Write us an email at goodmorning at ntd.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Kevin Hogan. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.